Hello students, today in your geometry class you're going to be working on segment and angle addition postulate. At the end of this lesson you should be able to solve problems involving segment addition postulate and angle addition postulate. So below are a few definitions that I'd like for you to write down your note, write down in your notes. This includes, includes the midpoint which would be the middle point of a line site of a line so the middle point of a line congruent which is denoted by the following symbol so congruent uses the sign uses the equal sign with the an enya or a tilde above it to denote that lengths are the same and equal so segments are the same that are the same length are congruent. Now when we refer to congruent and equal, congruent refers to measures, which doesn't necessarily re mention the number. However, we can say that their angle measures are equal or that angles are congruent. So in the example we put below congruent segments, we say that in the line line AC we can easily say that line segment AB is congruent to line segment BC because they have this little tally mark denoting that they are congruent not equal because notice we did not mention any numbers whatsoever congruent angles are the same idea we have the measure we have angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and those angle measures are the same and we denote that below because we have this set of vertical angles which we'll learn about later. So quick warm up is that if RS or line segment RS equals 15 and line segment ST equals 9 then RT is equal to and that's what you're supposed to figure out. So hopefully you wrote down RS equals 15 so this segment here has a length of 15 and ST is 9 therefore line segment RT has a measure of 24 now doing the second example problem with the same line we're saying that ST equals 15 so ST equals 15 and RT equals 40. So we know the whole, the length of the entire piece or line segment is 40. Now we're supposed to figure out what RS is. Now since we don't know what RS is, like so, and we know the entire thing is 40, couldn't we say that X equals 40 minus 15 which is 25 and we can say that because if 40 is the entire length and 15 is ST then line segment RS must be the difference between the two now here are some more definitions and examples now we have an acute angle and an acute angle is an angle whose measure is less than 90 degrees then we have an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is an angle whose measure is greater than 90 degrees but less than 180. A right angle is an angle whose measure is equal to 90 degrees. So if you were to imagine making an L with your finger, that portion where your index finger and your thumb meet, that angle right there should create a 90 degree angle straight angles should be fairly self-explanatory. There are angles who there are angles that create a straight line and whose measure is 180 degrees. Vertical angles are angles who have opposite rays and vertical angles are always congruent. So if you'll notice in the figure to the right and just above it we can say that angle ACB this angle right here formed by that little arc 
is congruent to angle D C E. Notice how they're opposite of one another. One's on the far left, the other is on the far right. So if that were the case, and they said angle A C D, which is on the very top, should be congruent to angle B C E, which is on the very bottom. So vertical angles will always be congruent and they will always be opposite of each other, just like in the image I, I showed you to the right. Adjacent angles. Adjacent means that they are next to or adjoining. So imagine if you live in a house or an apartment, chances are the room that you sleep in is adjacent to another room, for example your parents room. Now they're in the same house and they share the same wall and that's what it means for things to be adjacent. They'll share a wall or a line or array. So if you look at the image to the right with angle ABC that has a 90 degree angle, we could say that angle ABD, this angle formed in red, and angle BDC, these angles are adjacent because they share a same side. They share ray BD, which I'm highlighting in blue. So because they share that same side, then these two angles are adjacent. Next one is complementary angles. Now, complementary angles are two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. So going back to our image in the middle on the right hand side, we have angle ABC. Now, what that's saying is if we add up this angle ABD and we add up the angle DBC, if we add up those two angles, that should be equal to 90 degrees. And those would be our complementary angles. One that I don't see listed here is supplementary angles. And supplementary angles are extremely important. And the way that I remember that is I tend to look at supplementary angles as two C's. So to hopefully illustrate that, I have a C here and another C here. Now if complementary angles have a measure of 90 degrees, which is 1C, then supplementary angles, which I look at as having two C's, like I'm showing you an image on the right or left, to me that looks like the two C's form an S. So if complementary, which is 1C, are two angles whose sum is 90, then supplementary, which has two C's, will have double that. So therefore, supplementary will be two angles whose sum is 180 degrees. So, make sure you please write this down on your notes, and we're going to go ahead and move on. So, I alluded to postulate 1, 6, and 1, 8 in the warm-up, which is the segment addition postulate. Now, it says, if three points A, B, and C are collinear, and B is between points A and C, then AB plus BC is equal to C. So what that means is in English is that if I took line segment AB and line segment BC, if I added those two angles up, that should be equal to line segment AC, which should make sense because we're adding two smaller line segments and the sum of those two line segments just so happens to be equal, or the, their angle measures are equal, but the line segments are congruent to AC. Angle addition postulate is the same idea. It says if I add up two angles, two angles who are adjacent, 
then that sum would be equal to the sum of the larger angle. So let's do a couple of practice problems. So example one, we have PT equals 4x minus 6. So we have PT is 4x minus 6. And we have TQ, which is 3x plus 4. Now notice they want us to find PQ. So we have to think for a second that PQ, which is the entire line segment, isn't that equal to PT, line segment PT, plus line segment TQ? Because if I add up those two line segments, that'll be equal to the measure of the larger segment, which is PQ. Now, we don't know what PQ is, but we know that PT and PQ are congruent to one another. So that means that PT, which is 4x minus 6, is equal to TQ, which is 3x plus 4. So because they're congruent, because it shows the tally mark, what we could do is solve for x. So we're going to subtract 3x to both sides. We're going to be left with x minus 6 equals 4. Then we're going to try and isolate the variable by adding 6 to both sides. We get x equals 10. So now that we know what x is equal to, we can substitute that into our PT and our PQ values. So we know that PT equals 4x minus 6. So 4 times 10 minus 6. That's 40 minus 6, which obviously is 34. Now just to check, PT and TQ should be equivalent to another one another, but let's double check it. So TQ equals 3x plus 4. So we have 3 times 10 plus 4, and that's equal to 34. So earlier we used this formula, PQ is equal to PT plus TQ. Now we know that PT and TQ are the same. Therefore, both of them should be 34, leaving us with PQ is equal to 68. Next one is angle is example 2. Now what's very helpful, and I am actually making it mandatory, is that you write the angles, or you draw the little arcs for our angles, because it makes it easier to spot. So for example 2, it says F or G, F, J. G, F, J is this angle right here. You'll notice because if you follow along as you read it, G starts there, comes down to F, and moves down to J, which creates the angle that I've done up in red. Then we have angle E, F, G. Now E, F, G is E, F, G, which is this angle right there in blue. Now, what you'll notice is that angle JFE, that's equal to 180 degrees because it creates a straight line or a straight angle. Now we know that angle JFE is actually angle JFG plus angle EFG, which is equal to 180. Now, angle JFG, we still don't know what that's equal to, but we do know that EFG is 110 degrees. So if we subtract 110 to both sides, we'll find that angle JFG is equal to 70 degrees. Now it's your turn. Try solving these problems and putting them on your notes. So that's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.